All right, everybody. I'm going to do a very special video. I recorded it once, but I wasn't very happy with it. I didn't feel like my thoughts were focused enough, and I really want this to come out right. I'm going to do a video on the best 6th generation consoles. Or the best 6th generation console. One. That would include the Xbox, PS2, GameCube, and Dreamcast. So... I chose the 6th generation because it's the one I grew up the best in. I stood, I've, of course, I was born in the 5th generation with the N64, Sega Saturn, if I'm not mistaken, and the PlayStation. And played on the PlayStation and loved the PlayStation. It was my favorite. So, but I was much older and much more intelligent around the sixth generation. I still wasn't that knowledgeable about it all, but that tends to be where I grew up the most and where I, what I know the most of about games. So that's the one I'm going to cover. So let's talk about it. Uh, I'm going to place each one from fourth to third to second to first, and it is not easy. I reached a conclusion uh, earlier after I made the video, but I wasn't happy with how I presented it. So I really want it to come out properly. So let's see. The first one I suppose we'll talk about the big elephant in the room. The fucking Dreamcast, man. Fuck the Dreamcast. Okay, I'm gonna come out and say it just from the very beginning in the get-go. Fuck the Dreamcast. No one gives a shit about it. And if you do give a shit about it, I apologize. I don't want to offend you. But let me, let's talk real. How many fucking people own a Dreamcast that you know? How many people owned a Dreamcast when you were, when it was the fucking big deal? No one. I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of people who loved games. Not one of them liked the Dreamcast. I didn't even know that the fucking Sega made consoles back then. Okay, so Dreamcast was not popular. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad console, but let's take a look at it. So what does the Dreamcast offer that the others don't? Huh. Funny, I can't fucking think of anything. Can you? <laughs> the only thing I can think of that the Dreamcast offers is a line of shitty Sonic games. <laughs> and I think Soul Calibur originally came out on it. That's it. I can't fucking think of any other games on it. And even the multiple platform games, I don't even fucking find Dreamcast games. I've seen some Dreamcasts around here, but no fucking games for it. I'm going to come out and say it. There aren't any fucking games for it. No one gives a shit about it. No one gave a shit about it. And apparently it was not successful because Sega never made another console after that. The end. So it must have flopped because that is the reason that they single-handedly went out of business. Well, not single-handedly. That's not fair. They were sucking dick way before the Dreamcast, but that was their... Swan song goodbye. And I'm not to, I don't want you all to think I hate it. I never even really played on it. But from what I know of it, and from what little I know of it, because no one bought one, it just didn't really compete that well with the other consoles. So I'm just going to have to come out and say it. When you think about it, the Dreamcast just cannot win against its competition. The controller didn't have a rumble pack, you had to buy one that, extra. From what I understand, the controller is not that ergonomic, especially considering some of the best controllers came out of the 6th generation. And, the, like I said, the fact you have to buy a rumble pack, you know, add-ons for the controller in order to actually fucking... No, fuck that, man. I don't, I'm not about that life. I don't like to have to buy extra features in order to make my console better. If it doesn't come with it immediately, then that's already a negative. No one wants to have to go out and buy more shit for their console. So, as far as exclusives go, and controllers, and functionality, the Dreamcast does not hold up compared to its competition, in my opinion, from what I know of. And I know I'm going to get all the fucking hate from the n five people that watch this video about the Dreamcast, being it's the greatest console ever, but I don't like it. So, now that we got that elephant in the room addressed, let's talk about the three true competitors. The Xbox, the GameCube, and the PS2. It is so hard for me to choose which one I like the best, because I love them all. I've played on all three of them, and I love them in their own way. As far as the GameCube goes, hands down, best fucking exclusives.
You got Super Mario Sunshine. You got Star Fox Assault, which I actually love. I don't give a fuck what people think. That's a great fucking... In my opinion, it's probably one of the best Star Fox games. You got... Metroid Prime, I think I said that. Super Mario Sunshine, I think I said that. Some Legend of Zelda games, some of the best ones, like Wind Waker. Just the best exclusives, hands down. One of the best controllers of the generation. That thing, that bitch melts in your hand. I'm going to be honest. As far as how it feels, you'd think by how thin the grips on it are that it wouldn't feel right. But the fact that they're so thin makes it feel like an extension of your body. My only complaint about it is the C-Stick for shooters, because this game, this was back when Nintendo gave a fuck about party support. Um, it had all the shooters, admittedly, probably play the worst on the GameCube, because that C-Stick just doesn't fit. And the Z button, that's like the substitute for both the L2 and R2 buttons, or the black and white button on the Xbox controller, doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's not bad. I still love it. I mean, the fucking you can get past all of that. Once you pick it up and you play a game on that bitch, you will not even think about it. But get, the GameCube might be the best in terms of its first-party game. Oh, and Tales of Symphonia. Don't let me forget that fucking game. Love that game. Favorite, Probably my favorite game on that bitch. But it's limited in its functionality doesn't have backwards compatibility with the N64. It was moved from being a cartridge-based console, now they're making Nintendo made disc-based consoles. The discs were smaller than their competition, which also meant they tended to hold less. I don't can't think of any instances where that really mattered except maybe GTA. I think GTA wasn't able to come out on the GameCube because of its size. I don't know if that's true. It might have been something else. But I don't think that that really affected anything, but admittedly, we'll address that. The discs are smaller. Had no online support. There was no way to play games online. Not that, that I really care. At least back then, I didn't want to really... I didn't have internet anyway, and a lot of people didn't. But admittedly, another problem. Um, let's see. Uh, and it didn't have any DVD support. Even the Xbox had DVD support. You just had to get a plug in, which, again, like I said, I hate having to get add-ons, I'd like everything to be in the console or on the console, but at least it was possible to play DVDs. There was nothing for the GameCube to make that possible. So, if you look at it, it has the best first-party games. If you want to, but they're also some of the most expensive ones, too. That's why if you're like a collector trying to go back and collect for the GameCube, for some fucking reason, their games are so fucking expensive, and I don't know why. I gave a shit ton of them out to my friend, and I didn't really realize how rare they were, and he actually had someone steal them. Apparently, they're so valuable, this f his friend actually stole them. I got him, like, 30 of my collection of games for his birthday, and his fucking friend stole half of them. And some of them are really valuable. Star Fox Assault, man, it still goes for, like, 50 bucks. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, 50 bucks. So, if you are going back and trying to collect for it. It's got some of the best games, but they're also, like, literally as expensive as games today. It's insane. But it does have some of the best games. So if you're looking for the console with the best first-party games and a great controller to boot, GameCube is really up there. Now let's talk about the PS2. No, you know what? We'll save the PS2. I want to talk about the Xbox, secondly. The Xbox was the unsung hero of that generation. It established all the things that we know today about gaming. Internal memory cards. I, and I mean a huge internal memory card to fucking boot. Let me just get that out of the way. Um, a really awesome controller. One designed perfectly for shooters. At least if the S-Type. The fucking Duke, I think it's called. That big ass bitch. I never even held one of those and I don't even want to think about it. That one, that controller sucks to my knowledge. I mean, just look at how big it is, man. It's the size of an Asian. <laughs> so, the S-Type controller, though, very good, very ergonomic. I don't like the black and white buttons on it very much. I'm glad that they got rid of that for the uh, bumpers on the 360. But, you know, it's not bad. Uh, what else did it fucking have? Uh, oh yeah, it was the real big internet one. If you wanted to online game, this this thing was your baby. Of the 6th generation consoles, if you were really looking to try and play games with more people, 
This was the fucking bitch to go. This son of a bitch, you can system link four fucking Xboxes together and four players split screen across, across four fucking TVs for a 16 match versus your friends on Halo. Fucking 16 players back in the Xbox generation. You, that's not something to fucking overlook. So, but of course, all their servers are down now, so if you're going back to Collect 4, you can kiss that shit goodbye. So, but we're not, we're just going to pretend the future hadn't happened. Let's all pretend that we're back in the year 2000. We're wondering about the new millennia. We've heard about the mind calendar in 15 years, going to kill us all or whatever. You know, we're still, 9-11 just happened and we're all so sad and terrorists are going wild. George Bush was president. Let's pretend that's all going down. Or... Vic Queen Victoria was still queen, whatever the fuck you are in the world. So, of that time, because the Xbox had that amazing online capability, if that was where you wanted to go, if you were really looking forward to the future of game being online, then this was the console. For exclusives, I think Xbox has some of the shittiest exclusives. I'm going to come out and say it. <laughs> I, I, and admittedly, I actually like a lot of the Xbox exclusives. I think Halo is awesome. I recently got Halo. Fucking beautiful game, man. I love it. It's so expansive. It shows you how amazing the Xbox's capabilities truly are. But that's really all I can think of that's really... I know a lot of people like Dead or Alive, Extreme Beach Volleyball. That's supposed to be really cool. That's good. I think Fable's shitty. I don't like it. Like, I've played so many RPGs, you really have to fucking show me something great. Especially since, as a PS2 guy, I've been exposed to Squaresoft RPGs, the fucking best. So you have to up Squaresoft in order to fucking get me to enjoy an RPG. And Fable does not do that by any stretch of the imagination. Even though I don't think it's bad either, it actually really shocked me how much, how sad it made me at this one part, which I won't spoil, but... Yeah, anyway, I don't think its exclusives are all that to be, to sing praises about. Compared to the others, it doesn't have bad ones, don't hate me, I mean, Xbox has got a lot better exclusives now, I know Gears of War, everyone wants to suck its cock, but we're, again, we're back with George Bush as president, Queen Victoria as queen, and all that shit. So, that's the Xbox. Now, let's talk a little bit about the PS2. The console that can do everything. No joke. It boasted that it can do everything. It could fucking do everything. You got a $200 console that is as expensive as a DVD player. But is not just a DVD player a CD player, a PlayStation 1 backwards compatible console, and a PS2 console. Oh wait, shit. One last thing I want to mention about the Xbox. It is capable of fucking 1080i. Before I go into the PS2 and about all of its fucking features, Xbox is still ca is capable of HD. H double D's nuts. That bitch is powerful. 1080i, not many games took advantage of it, but the console itself was powerful enough for fucking HD and still looks good on TVs today. That's a huge bonus I'd like to throw out there. Not that don't get crunk about it though because there's not very many games that can do it, but it was capable. Now moving on to the PlayStation 2. Before I do that though, we're going to take a brief break to just reevaluate everything. So, let's just sum it all up so we're all on the same page. You got Dreamcast, piece of shit. GameCube, best exclusive so far, and awesome controller, and the Xbox, really good controller, at least the S-Type is, decent games, when you look at it, they're all, so far, everything's pretty fucking even, it's hard to say which one is best, because there's so many features that one does better than the other. Now let's look for a little retrospective into the PS2, because there's a lot of ground to cover, and I don't have time before this commentary bubble fills up to discuss it. So, and picking up right back from where I paused, now let's talk about the PS2 because it could take you me literally 15 minutes just to talk about everything the PS2 is capable of. So, let's say you are in the fifth generation consoles. You've never even heard of backwards compatibility. You got a PS1 because it was the new cool thing, or you didn't get a PS1, you still love Nintendo or Sega for whatever fucking reason you wanted a Saturn. 
and you just didn't, you might have found some PS1 games, had some friends loan them to you and shit, but you never actually got a PS1, let's say. You were still a Nintendo guy. So sixth generation comes around, and you start thinking, god damn, you know, I wonder what the PS1 had to offer. I know Squaresoft jumped ship and came over to PlayStation. Big fucking games, like 20 times the size of the the not fucking Xbox, the N64's capabilities. You know, I really wish I would have gotten a PlayStation, but I don't want to buy one now. Guess what, bitch? PlayStation 2, right up your fucking alley. You've got backwards compatibility on that bitch. You can put any PlayStation 1 game into that thing, and it'll work. It's the first console to be backwards compatible. It can play DVDs, like I said, at release, at launch. As soon as you open that bitch, you pop a DVD in there, and you're watching DVDs. You pop a CD in that bitch, you're still playing CDs. My fucking PS4 is a piece of shit compared to the PS2. Okay? That bitch can't even play... I have a Witcher 3 CD, and the PS4 won't even play that bit. I can put that thing in a PlayStation 2, and it works like a charm. Can't put it in a PS4. Let me just fucking throw that out there. Sony, get up your fucking game with this shit, but... <laughs> all of that aside, it can literally do everything. And it can do it without any add-ons or any bonus features. It can do that. Now let's talk a little bit about the exclusives. In the PS2 era, there were some pretty awesome exclusives for the PlayStation 2. I'm not gonna lie, it has a huge library of exclusives. A lot of adventure games, like Jack and Daxter, anything from fucking Naughty Dog was gold. Of course, however, it did lose a lot of exclusives still, with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro jumping ship and going to all sorts of people. So, it lost a lot of its exclusives, but it gained a shit ton. Like I said, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, still with Squaresoft sucking that Sony cock. You've got Final Fantasy X. You've got that shitty fucking Final Fantasy X-2 that makes you want to blow your fucking brains out and go and bomb Squaresoft. you got Final Fantasy XI and XII, which apparently also were okay, and I never cared because they weren't that great from what I know. And But you still got Squaresoft, and as long as you got Squaresoft on your side, I'm pretty sold. I love a L Squaresoft RPGs. But let's put that aside. I don't no fanboying is allowed here because this is an honest in depth look. So you got some pretty awesome exclusives, but they weren't initially released with it. Admittedly, PS2 was sold originally basically as just a DVD player. Not a whole lot of games, nothing really made by Sony, just mostly it just was Sony making all the hardware and leaving everything to the third party. Which isn't bad, but when you got Nintendo making great sequels to their previous titles, you kind of you gotta admit. But, again, the PS2 could do everything. It had to have a network adapter, but it could even play online. It still could rival the Xbox with its online service. It just wasn't as good, and again, like I said, I don't want to have to buy an add-on for my console. But it could play online, and it was capable of that. So now we've dis well wait, I mean, not done yet. Controller, I love Sony's controllers. I am one in a million. People really do not like DualShock, and I can see why. I have kind of small hands, so I, I my hands fit really well around a PS2 controller, or a, P a PlayStation controller in general. But not everybody is me. And most people hate that fucking controller. Or not hate it, I guess, but they don't like it. They don't prefer it. And I can't really blame them. Admittedly, the Xbox controller feels better, and the GameCube controller melts in your fucking hand. Compared to the PS2, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. I love the DualShock controller too, but it is not as good as its competition's controllers. It's better than the PS1's controller, not the best one of the generation. I think that covers everything on the PS2. I mean, there's a shit ton of things to cover on that bitch. But but admittedly, also, it was not capable of HD. No games ever played in HD. And nowadays, if you put it into... If you try to hook your PS2 up to an HD TV, it looks like fucking ass. I won't lie. I just tried to play Resident Evil 4 on it 
on my little HD TV, and I was like, this is the fucking worst. Everything was so blurry, I couldn't barely read it. I had to bust out my TV I had from my childhood in order to play that thing. So, now I've got a mild minute. We covered everything. All the consoles. Now let's start thinning out the herd. So, straight up, fuck the Dreamcast, fourth place. I gotta be honest. I don't think the Dreamcast, compared to its competition, stands a fucking chance. And it didn't. Clearly it didn't. It might have had some awesome games. It might have been capable of doing some awesome things, like playing that Metal Gear Solid game in the best, just the best quality. I don't give a shit. It is not the best console of the fourth generation, and enough people agree with me that it didn't sell well. And it's just not the best. I won't give it any more shit than that because I don't know enough about it and I never played on it enough to know whether or not that is fair. But I have to admit it's not going to win and I don't think it would ever win on anybody's list of best 6th generation consoles. So that leaves the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PS2. Now here's where it gets difficult because some every console does one thing better than the other. GameCube, best exclusives. Xbox, best online and an internal memory card. PlayStation, most functionality. So how do you fucking look at them and decide which one's the best? Well, that's where it gets difficult. I'm going to try and discern which one is the best. So, you got the GameCube that's got its really great first party games but admittedly it can't play PS2 it can't, or it can't play it has no backwards compatibility it's not a DVD player and there was never any network adapter made for it it was never capable of online as far as functionality goes it's the worst of the three all it can do is play games which again admittedly that's all you really should want your console to do and it plays them pretty fucking well but when you look at it for what it is, it is the most limited in functionality. Ugh. Because of that fact, too, I have to give it the third place slot. I don't want to because it's one of my favorite consoles from that generation. I love my GameCube and it's got some of the best exclusives. But as far as functionality goes, if you were a new, fresh-faced 18-year-old looking for which console you wanted, the GameCube does not have a whole lot to win you over, except its games, its first-party games that admittedly are awesome, but tend to be for a more younger audience. A younger, at least a younger audience will appreciate them more. So... I don't want to, of course, I mean, I don't want to say that, and I, because Mario games are awesome for all generations, but you got I'm going to have to be honest, GameCube has got to take the third place, simply for its limited functionality. So that leaves the Xbox and the PS2 as the final rivals. Which one's better? The Xbox is a beast, taken apart from a thousand different Dell computers mashed in together to make a PC console that's easy to develop for and capable of the highest graphical resolution for the best quality gaming. But then you got the PS2 that can do everything. You can play your PS1 games on. You can instantly watch DVDs straight out of the box. You can play games. You have access to amazing exclusives. So how do you choose which one's the best? That's where it gets difficult. So, let's look at the individual categories. As far as controller goes, Xbox is better. GameCube is best, in my opinion, but Xbox is still better than the PS2, and it is a close second to the best controller of that generation. The bumpers feel awesome, at least the S-Type, the one that was released after the Duke. The Duke is shitty, but <laughs> that one was not many gamers even know about the Duke anyway, to my knowledge, so... S-Type ended up being the one that took over. Good controller. It is a better controller than the PlayStation 2 in many ways. A longer cord. Just 
overall probably the best experience and the triggers are the best for any shooter as far as exclusives go Sony wins by a landslide to the Xbox there's just not that many exclusives that Microsoft has and not many really memorable exclusives that people celebrate other than Halo at least from that time functionality PS2 wins over the Xbox in that way. It can pretty much do everything the Xbox can do out of the box, where the Xbox needs little add-ons. The only thing that the PlayStation 2 doesn't have that Xbox does is the best online capabilities. And even still, the PS2 can rival it because it does have a network adapter. Gaming quality. Xbox trumps the PS2. The fact that it can even play games in HD, even if it is only 3, means it is the better console as far as functionality as far not functionality but graphics goes it makes the games look the best and even has i've known several games that have bonus features that the PlayStation 2 couldn't even handle so that brings me to the final verdict PS2 or Xbox who's the winner if you never cared about games up until the sixth generation and you were looking for which console to choose you'd have to go with the xbox because it has the best quality games and the best multiplayer experience and one of the best controllers it might not have the best exclusives but because of that fact all of the games that it does have that it's third party supports it is the best gaming experience but, if you have been a gamer, and you loved your PlayStation 1, or you loved the old games, and you want the next best thing, you have to give it to the PS2 for its backwards compatibility and its multiple functionality straight out of the box. So which one, in the end, is best? I'm going to have to give the Xbox second place to the PS2 PS2 is the best console of the sixth generation Sony's PlayStation 2 wins over the Xbox by a margin for its backwards compatibility and multiple functionality it can play DVDs the Xbox can't it is if I remember right cheaper than the Xbox was at its release and it can still play games just about as well as the Xbox. Even though the Xbox can make games look better, very few games actually looked better. PS2 wins simply because it can do anything that anything that can play a disc can do. So that is my final verdict for sixth generation console winner. It would go first PlayStation 2, second Xbox, third GameCube, fourth Sega Dreamcast. I know you guys probably don't agree with that list and you want to kill me and hate me, but you can't argue with the facts that the PlayStation 2 sold the best and is the best selling console of all time with the most features and the best options available to you. So this is my final verdict. I know you guys probably won't agree and you'll hate me and kill me, but that is the end of this video and that's my final answer. Leave a comment explaining which one you think is the right one and which console generation you'd like me to cover next, if you'd even like me to, because God knows you'd probably hate me after this, but I'd be willing to do cover any generation that you want. This is just the one I know the best and the one I wanted to start off with. So thanks everyone for watching, and I hope to hear from you all and come up with another video soon.